Hello students, in this sequence of videos, I am going to teach you all the important concepts of computer networks. I will start from the basics and I ensure that you understand up to advanced level. And I am assuming that you don't know anything about computer networks. Okay, let me begin with introduction to computer networks. So generally if you take any textbook then introduction is very lengthy. I am not doing the same thing. So what I do is, uh, I know that what are the essential ideas or concepts which are required to be discussed over the uh, computer network subject. So I give you introduction such a way that with so many questions such a way that automatically you realize that these concepts are really required for computer networks and these are the real concepts of the computer networks okay through questions. So please try to answer each and every question and stop the video whenever you want whenever I ask a question okay let's begin. You have let's say two elements which are communicating devices Raju and Rani otherwise you can say Raju has a device Rani has a device and they want to communicate. This is the smallest problem in the computer network. So what to do then? So what are the extra things we need for a proper communication is the question. Think about it. So one thing is medium isn't it? So without medium we cannot send the data right. So sender, receiver and medium. Apart from that do we need anything? Stop the video and think about it. Then you realize that we require some set of rules. So all the computer networks revolves around this important protocols. So protocol is nothing but set of rules which generally communicating devices agree upon. Okay. Example, uh, can you explain with real world example sir? Yes. Raju wants to communicate with Rani. It's a human communication let's say. Uh, maybe Raju wants to ask time. Rani, what is the time now? Then Rani should say, I don't know. Otherwise, she should say, the time right but what Rani says what is your age then so that's not a right communication correct when someone asks time then Rani should tell the time otherwise she should say I don't know right this is general rules right so see that's fine even in human communication also we have some set of rules they should be followed second thing when Raju asks in English Rani also should assume that uh, this is in English what if Rani try to understand what if Rani only knows Hindi then she cannot understand correct. So again one more common rule is so common language right they should agree upon a common language. Example let's say when I am teaching you in English you can understand because the common agreement is like we are talking in English. What if you assume that I am talking in Hindi then you don't understand anything right. So that's why some common agreements are required. So that is the heart of the computer networks protocols. So we are going to study hundreds of protocols in entire computer networks. We will see that. So now let me summarize. When Raju and Rani communicates, we require some important things like you know sender receiver which is I mean I don't want to discuss because it's obvious right. Apart from that you require medium and protocols. Let's study about protocols. Now let me take same problem between these two like one problem what we face generally is when sender is fast and receiver is slow. See this situation. Example, let's say Raju can send 2 bytes per second. Fine. But Rani can understand or can process only 1 byte per second. That is what usually happens when you have devices, right? So, one solution is definitely Rani has to have buffer. If Rani doesn't have buffer, then when Raju sends 2 bytes, then Rani cannot hold then definitely proper communication won't happen agree. So that's why one storage is required that is called buffer. Let's say in that buffer Rani is keeping the data and slowly she is processing. Now see this situation. What is the buffer size? Let's take buffer size to something around 4 bytes. Okay. It looks like fair enough. Okay. But even 4 bytes is not sufficient. Why? See. Example after 10 seconds what happens we'll see. Within 10 seconds so Raju can send 20 bytes let's call them A, B, C, D so on okay. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H in that way. I'm writing 20. So each letter is one byte. I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T right 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. It's 20 bytes. But within uh, 10 seconds 
Rani can consume only 10 bytes, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, what about K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T? They should go to buffer, right? But 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There are 10 bytes. You have only 5, 4 byte capacity. So, in this situation, so what to do, sir? Whatever the buffer you take, same thing can happen eventually, right? After some period of time. So, the only solution is discarding. But if you discard, then you lose some data, then it's not a proper communication. So, remember one thing, we need a proper communication. That is essential, right? So, then what to do? The only thing is, we have to study some or we should keep some systematic rules. They are nothing but flow control protocols. Finally, this flow should be controlled. How to control the flow? I don't want to discuss this here because it's an introduction, right? So, we just mention the names of the protocols that group of protocols are called flow control protocols fine now there is another problem you see whatever the medium you take example let's say i am taking a copper cable okay due to its physical property when you send a signal what can happen maybe uh, because of through uh, external disturbance like air otherwise maybe thunder maybe rain for so many reasons sometimes the signals get corrupted that means so sender sends a signal zero then that might become one after uh, at the receiver so that's a one important problem which is to be addressed correct so now if raju sends zero rani gets one what's the you know purpose of com communication right it's a bad communication so somehow we have to solve that problem that is nothing but this is error we have to control the errors that's why we are going to study error control protocols so there I am going to introduce you various mechanisms like Hamming code and CRC and all. Okay, we will see that. First understand the problems now. So these are the two important problems in communication between two communicating devices. Now let us extend this idea. What if we have multiple computers or communicating devices? Let me take five devices and explain what are the extra problems we face. Okay. Now we will see what happens if we have five communicating devices. So let us take like this A. B, C, D, E. Fine. If you have only two, then we can connect like this. Right. This is also known as a link. We can have a dedicated link between AC and AD. Similarly, BD, BC. From C, we can have E and D. From D, we can have E. Right. Did we miss anything? To A to E. From B to E also, we can have link. Okay. So, this is a simple idea. So that anyone can talk to anyone, right? So, but if you see, it's a costly affair because between every two, now you had a link, right? So, link takes some cost, right? Because maybe if they are one kilometer apart, then probably to have a line between A to B, uh, imagine a copper cable, definitely it's expensive, right? So, that's why this is actually called topology or structure. So, mesh topology, this one is very costly one. Can we have any other topology? Think about it. So then you understand that the bus topology is little bit better than or far better than mesh topology. So if we connect these computers A, B, maybe C, D, E like this. Let's say this is a channel. So we connect like this A, B, C, D, E. Then it would be good idea. See very less number of connections right this is called bus topology now when you have a bus topology then what happens you see this is a copper cable let's say okay now maybe we can connect like this so a will be connected here and b will be connected here here and here and here question number one if a wants to talk to e how he will talk how he sends a message from now onwards we use a word called packet packet is nothing but you know some set of bytes okay so some information a wants to send a packet to e for communication then how he will do so maybe he can just send a packet p then what it will go like this and everyone will see it everyone can take it right if everyone takes it then there is a dilemma actually a has written it for e b c d should not take it at least you know b c d are not that kind of people like they don't want to read others uh, messages but they have a ambiguity like they thought it is for them right so somehow there should be a mechanism for differentiating the uh, devices correct so that's why what is important here addressing system 
So when you have multiple systems, then what we need? So far we had only two. That's why. So they they uh, we don't need uh, addressing, but here you require addressing. So generally, when you have devices, what we can use is physical addresses can be used. I will explain what is physical address or known as MAC address. In the evolution, when computer networks are evolved, then when this kind of situation happened, people used physical addressing or MAC. MAC is also known as medium access control. Okay. So, sir, what is medium access control? Here you have a medium, right? Okay. So, you have a common medium to access it. So, we use this address. Slowly you will understand because in Ethernet topic, you will clearly understand why this is called medium access control. I don't want to discuss now. At this moment, you just understand that because we have a common medium, there are a lot of elements we should be, they should be addressed. So, uh, sir, how to get that MAC? Like who will give it? So, manufacturer, example, let's say whenever these devices are created, so that devices will be having network interface card because we know that we are connecting them to network. So, each de such device will have a network interface card, that inter network interface card will have this address, physical address. Manufacturer will do that. So that everyone will have a different physical address, such a way they can plan it. Like, you know, example, you have a car, right? So car will have an engine number, right? Unique engine number, if you see. So that's an agreement between uh, vendors, okay? So similarly here also, you can have all different addresses. The size of the address is actually 48 bit binary number. Okay, it's a 48 bit. So with that, 2 to the power of 48 different patterns can be formed. 2 power 48 is a very big number. It's more than 10,000 crores, more than 10,000 crores. That means if you uh, like, that means if you have 10,000 crores, more than 10,000, I'm not saying exactly 10,000, it's beyond that. Okay. So even you have 10,000 computers or devices in the world, still we don't get any addressing problem that's it okay it's a huge number 2 power 48 now let me come to another problem sir if i a sends a message to b okay at the same time b c also wants to send the message see this situation okay a is sending a message at nine o'clock c is also sending at same time then what happens the signals will collide right so that is called collision so because of that what happens see another signal is coming like this so because of this so that uh, you know it's simply like you know error correct so zero might become one one might become zero otherwise you know we might get a different symbol correct so that's why what i don't want to discuss all these details because it's introduction to make the things simple like example let's say you wrote a letter a you're writing a message to your friend you wrote a same time your friend is also writing a message to you or otherwise some someone else then if you have same common place to write then he wrote b here okay you wrote a then b now no one can understand actually whether it is a or b correct so that's the same problem occurs here so then what to do then then we have to solve this problem when you have multiple systems which are connected to a common medium then you get a problem called collision so to avoid that that means we need a scheme called access control so we are going to study a topic called access control okay so to do the access control we have one technology that is called ethernet ethernet is a technology if you use it then this problem can be solved all the problems related to uh, like multiple systems okay let me summarize you have multiple systems and if you connect them to common medium, then you face a lot of problems, right? All that problems are addressed using one technology called Ethernet. Okay. Not only that, we have another technology called token ring. Of course, it is now obsolete. That means no one is using, but Ethernet become very popular so that uh, anyone who have 20 to 30 systems or 1000 systems, okay, and a network, they will connect using Ethernet technology. Okay, they form a computer network. So finally, I can say that this is a network because set of systems are connected. Correct. Now, when you have multiple networks, what happens? We'll see. So far, so far we have seen a problem with two devices. Now we have seen when you have a multiple systems, what we can do, how to connect them. Correct. 
we can use ethernet technology so ethernet technology solves all these problems addressing problem and second one uh, how access control can be managed okay so we will see that now i am going to teach you what if you have multiple networks how the communication takes place okay when you connect all these networks of the whole world that forms internet yes that is the way actually internet has been evolved really so now in such internet what are the problems we face we will see so why we face problems like already we have addresses everything right simply send the data no that won't be possible because initially we had a small network and we know uh, about every system and how to send the data because it's a small network and we can send right now you have uh, connected all the computers of the world right now example a wants to send the data to b then one thing first a should know the mac address of b but how a will know the mac address of b right so it will be very difficult right suddenly randomly a wants to send the data to c then how c i mean a will know the mac address of c correct it will be difficult so mac addresses should not be the idea of communication correct we should have something different and one more thing let's say a uh, knows all the mac addresses of every computer which he wants to communicate but the problem example let's say a writes a letter or a packet to b and here he sends uh, let's say it is for b and the mac address is written here then who will forward it like how that i mean so this network will know that so this is the place where b is located or this is the place where c is located that's a problem someone has to do that job right so that's why we need special devices they are called routers routers are very very important for us so router is going to do this real job you know sending the packet from one place to one network to another network okay now so now a whenever he has data he will simply gives that data to router okay he will create a packet and he will say like this my dear router this is my packet simply forward and this is the address okay now again so here again we should not use mac addresses the problem i will tell you mac addresses are random like you know every vendor like when the mush, uh, when he cre i mean vendor creates a system he will give mac addresses correct so who created mac addresses the vendors who created the devices correct because of that like anyone can purchase any device at any point of time so because of that so every device will have a random mac address now imagine situation uh, to understand this uh, problem with this MAC addresses example let's say Raju is writing a letter to Rani okay for that he is not using uh, this hierarchy of address like you know state name uh, city name and street name and apartment number otherwise apartment name and block number okay he is not using that hierarchy rather he is using MAC address kind of thing that is Aadhaar card number in India now everyone has Aadhaar card right so let's say Raju is using Aadhaar card number of Rani to write the letter see this situation Rani how are you and this is the Rani's Aadhaar card number 16 digit number or whatever okay yeah now see the postman's job struggle so this postman has to find out where is Rani using that Aadhaar card number right Aadhaar card number is nowhere related to location correct so it will be very difficult for postman to find out where is Rani then he has to shout he has to you know travel all the country correct to find out where is Rani correct it's very difficult thing so that's why this kind of model will not work then what to do that's the reason so new addressing system is proposed that is hierarchical addressing system so that is nothing but IP address okay now in our network internet we use IP addresses for communication okay now of course MAC addresses are also used we will see that when we use MAC address and we, when we use IP address we will see later but for global communication like example A wants to send the data to B so A has to must uh, A must specify IP address of B okay every system which is connected to internet should have an IP address okay so IP addresses are like uh, they are like hierarchy I will tell you how they are hierarchy example let's say you have a small network one two three four five systems okay now you just uh, newly created this network then what there is an authority called IANA go there and they will give you some sequence or related IP addresses just you know go to IANA and ask I want some IP addresses so I assume that generally IP addresses are 32 bit okay but I explain with 3 bit 
fine otherwise 4 bit so 4 bit ip addresses they have like this 0000 0001 0010 0011 and some l extra like series with 0100 like this okay now because you want 5 ip addresses what iana will do is if it will do for simplicity we assume that we have only 4 okay now so see the patterns 00011011 right four patterns these four patterns with starting sequence 00 will be given to you that's it now your address will be like this 00 and xx right so these two bits are enough to specify your address like your address is 00 and something else correct so there is a hierarchy exactly like you know this is state name this is let's say city name in that way correct so that's the reason this works okay now this is about ip addresses more details we'll see whenever we discuss uh, this uh, ip addresses at this moment because it's introduction i just want to introduce various things